Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and LEGO Animal Crossing is officially here with five mainline sets and one GWP poly bag if you spend enough money on the sets. This is a brand new theme from LEGO that is highly anticipated. I know so many people are incredibly excited about this theme and I can't wait to dive into a review of every single set. Starting off with these smaller ones, we've got Julian's birthday party right here. Moving on upwards, we've got the Bunny's Outdoor Activity Set, as well as the Captain's Island Boat Tour. We've got the Isabel's House Visit, and finally, Nook's Cranny and Rosie's House. These all introduce a number of brand new window elements and door elements that are seen in these sets for the very first time, and feel like a kind of throwback to Lego Fabuland in a lot of ways, which was a Lego anthropomorphic animal theme from all the way back in the 80s, so got some good old Lego nostalgia there. And of course we do have the poly bag of Naples Pumpkin Garden as well, which is just a really cute one. Without further ado though, let's jump on into my mega review of every single one of the brand new LEGO Animal Crossing sets, and I'm so excited to hear what you think as well. All right, so here we have the entirety of the LEGO Animal Crossing wave for March 1st, 2024. Starting off with the smallest set, we have 30662 Maple's Pumpkin Garden. It comes with 29 pieces and is a gift with purchase if you buy some of the other Animal Crossing sets, although since it's a poly bag, it would probably retail for around five US dollars. The first regular set is 77046 Julian's Birthday Party, which comes with 170 pieces for 15 US dollars or 15 euros. Next up, we have 77047 Bunnies Outdoor Activities. For $20, you get 164 pieces. Then we have 77048 Cappen's Island Boat Tour. For $30 or 30 euros, you get 233 pieces. And then we go on to two of the larger building sets. The first one is 77049, Isabel's House Visit. For $40 or 40 euros, you get 389 pieces, as well as a house build, plus a little bit of a side tree and a floating gift descending from the heavens. And lastly, the largest set of the wave is 77050, Nook's Cranny and Rosie's House. For $75 or 75 euros, you get 535 pieces, and primarily two of these large buildings here. So far, these are the only Animal Crossing sets that have currently been revealed, although there are rumors about a future Fauna's house coming out later this year, as well as a couple of other sets that we still don't know information on, so suffice to say that this is not going to be it for Animal Crossing. Now for this mega review, I want to take a look at the figures, the builds, talk about the building style, the modular aspect of the builds themselves, and see whether these sets are really worth the money that they're asking you to pay for them, and what I think Animal Crossing could be like in the future. So, let's dive in. Now one of my favorite things about the Animal Crossing sets is that much like some of my favorite LEGO themes, every single build is fully modular. The way that they're designed is they're utilizing the LEGO Super Mario pieces, which are basically the large base plate pieces they use for the Course Builder series of Super Mario, but in this case, since it's minifigure scale, it makes it a lot easier to customize a certain layout of however you want the sets to be. Take this set for example, you can see that every single bit of it is outlined in individual modules, and the way the build is put together is you just build these modules separately and then tie them together at the end, allowing you to come up with your own layouts even when you're just looking at one particular set, or better yet, you can actually combine the sets themselves, and they literally have leftover pieces sticking out of the backs of these sets that you can use to actually combine the sets to each other with stud connections. So if you want to build a full-on Animal Crossing course, you actually have the capability to do that, and everything works together in this whole system of play. We'll be taking a look at the individual individual modules and even trying your hand at building your own courses near the end of the review, but I just want to start off by taking a look at the sets, as usual for pretty much all the Duck Bricks reviews, from smallest to largest. What's pretty surprising is that the smallest set here actually does come with an exclusive minifigure, which is really nice, and we'll take a look at all of the figures near the end of the video, but this is actually a really nicely done minifigure. All of the animals for Animal Crossing have their own uniquely molded heads, with the little accessory attachment hole on the top of the heads in case you want to add flowers or birthday hats to them, just like in-game, and this is probably the most simple Animal Crossing set that you could get, but I feel like this set here really does display what the 
these sets are going for in terms of their vibe and kind of just comes across the entire style of these sets themselves. As you can see, Animal Crossing has introduced a number of new elements, the first of which is this tree trunk piece here. This is just a little nice tree trunk roots element that you can use to just build these small trees that dot the landscape. I am always all for more natural and foliage kind of wood-like tree pieces, so that's always a good one to get. And for a five buck poly bag, this is actually pretty remarkable value, especially because this minifigure doesn't appear in any other sets so far. We'll have to wait and see if this is going to be appearing in the summer wave or a future wave of Animal Crossing, but so far, this poly bag comes with an exclusive figure with a specialized head. It is the same headpiece that's shared with some of the other characters, which we'll take a look at later on the line, but it still is an exclusive kind of dual mold print. Even the torso is exclusive, and you even get one of the new pieces for the set itself. This poly bag is a major win for me and feels like very good value, especially because you normally get it as a GWP, but I've seen stores already selling it for $5, meaning that this is going to be a retail poly bag as well. Moving onwards to the next set here, this is Julian's birthday party, and this one, unfortunately, I feel like is kind of missing one minifigure. He's having a birthday party, but unfortunately, he's the only one celebrating his party, so that feels a little bit sad to me. You know, I feel like it could have used at least one more character. You've got so many gifts and okay, well maybe the player is celebrating with him, but I feel like it would have been nice for especially a 20 buck set like this to include at least just one more character. However, I do understand that these characters are a lot more expensive to include than regular LEGO minifigures. They've got all sorts of crazy customized dual or even triple molded components like this right here. I believe, yeah, that looks triple molded to me, with the azure, the lighter blue, as well as the white being integrated into the head of the character itself. That's actually really well done. So. This is a really nicely done character. There's a bit of a metallic shine on the torso itself, and we'll spend a closer look taking a look at the actual minifigures later on. But in terms of the build itself, Honestly, the builds for Animal Crossing are just fine for me. I think they're very charming, and they definitely have that modular aspect, but they're not the most advanced builds, and you'll have a lot more fun with the Animal Crossing sets, especially as you get to the larger sets in the wave. However, this is really nice because you do have a number of different presents just kind of arranged on the ground. Unfortunately, these don't really open up or anything, like there's nothing inside the presents, but they're mostly just there for decorative purposes. You have a large cape utilizing one of the Lego Friends cake elements that we've seen from a couple years back. You've got a radio that's playing some music, and you have one of those new tree elements, the tree trunk elements, attaching this tree, and a string of lights for the party festivities. This to me feels like kind of just your classic Lego friendly gathering set. You know, we've gotten a couple of these before. We got one for like the Unikitty disco party back in 2018. We got like a Justice League anniversary celebration for the Lego Batman movie. And uh, my apologies, I said this was 20 bucks. This is actually $15, making this pretty remarkable value. For 170 pieces, you get a brand new triple molded minifigure head and accessories, as well as just a nice birthday scene. Would I have liked there to be another minifigure? Yes, but now knowing that this was only $15, I definitely feel like putting in even just one more figure probably would have bumped this up to 20. So out of all the Animal Crossing sets, this probably has the best value in the wave in terms of getting a new character and a fully fleshed out build in some of the new pieces with just $15. It's a very charming thing. And yes, the entire set can be reconfigured as all of these different modules kind of separate out. So as you can see, here are the different modules that actually make up the set itself, where you have all of these individual components, and I do actually like the layout here, and this one has the most fixed layout out of all of them, because you do have that string that attaches everything, but for what it is, I do like it, and yes, this package does actually open up, revealing one of the exclusive new printed elements in the theme, which is this kind of coin star type of element there. So that is nice, some of the presents do actually open up, and this is just a pretty charming set. It's not really the set that I personally would be the most interested in, but I think for $15, it's pretty good value. Moving on to that, we can take a look at the actual $20 set of the wave, which is Bunny's Outdoor Activities. And to me, this is obviously a little bit bigger than the previous set, but still feels like especially this one could have used just one more minifigure to make the scene feel complete. However, you do get this specialized bunny mold, which only does appear in this set. This is the only one that comes with this particular style of bunny, which is really nice. You've got all sorts of different, very intricate detailing and printing on the minifigures themselves. It almost feels like this could be a collectible minifig series. And you actually have a fun little play feature to have bunny 
literally hop over the waterfall, because she is a bunny, of course, so that makes total sense. Now, moving inwards to the actual play features of the set itself, lifting up this rock reveals some secret treasure hidden inside the base of the build, so that kind of makes sense in-game, because you would actually be kind of gathering these collectibles, and you also have a tent element, which is kind of just very simple, you're just using two of these large panel pieces to be draped over the bed, Again, the build is really simple, and to me, this is one of these sets that I feel is really built to be modular, because, again, every single component here is meant to be separated out and reconfigured in a different layout. You have so many different components that are all kind of their own thing, and they all kind of come together to something that does make some sort of sense when it's laid out in a layout, but the instruction manual literally encourages you to customize the layout yourself. That's kind of the entire point of the Animal Crossing game, after all, and I really like how they've translated that into physical play for the LEGO sets, so you can feel like you are building your own custom islands, even with just the components included in one set. And the moment that you get another set and start to add on that set's components onto these ones, then you feel like you're getting a much more fleshed out scene where everything feels very densely compacted and there's a lot of things that you can actually do with these sets themselves. For $20 though, this particular set, Bunny's Outdoor Activities, feels maybe a little bit high, like especially piece count wise, I do get that you get two of these larger pieces, it's a 12 cent price per part ratio and it does come with a lot of these larger bases to use, it's just a very interesting system of play that is quite different than a normal Lego set, it's kind of hard to compare it alongside the same metrics that I would compare normal Lego sets by, but I do like the function, the hopping function is so simple but so cute, and that minifigure is just very very nicely produced, as are all of the minifigures in the wave to be completely honest but this is just another really cute character to add on to your Animal Crossing collection. Moving on from that though, we can take a look at the next set here, and this one is pretty interesting. It comes with a couple of different minifigures, so this one does actually come with two minifigures, which is nice. This is Cap'n's Island Boat Tour for 233 pieces. This retails for $30, and this is where I kind of feel like the prices of these do start to feel a little bit high, because I mean, if realistically you compare the two builds here, I don't feel like there is a $10 difference between these two builds. Like, this is 20 this is 30 and it just generally feels like the $30 set is pretty flat. There's not a lot of things going on with it. Yes, I guess you have some of these raised areas here. You have another one of those hidden sections where you've got the secret treasure hidden inside the rock there, so that's nice to see just a little additional feature inside of there. But altogether, since this is a beach scene, it does end up making you feel like you're just putting together very flat pieces, like just these large tan pieces are being assembled together to a very flat layout. It does include, however, a specialized printed tile, which is really nice. That's a really nice special printed tile. Two minifigures, including this kind of duck-like creature, and of course, how can I say no to the duck? And it even includes the Hermit Crab, which previously was exclusive to the collectible minifigure series, but they brought it back to be used in this particular set, so I think it is a nice set overall. The palm trees are fairly simple, but okay, you can actually remove the coconuts, which is nice. They're attached on slightly looser clips, so they're meant to be removed. And even the boat has a semblance of steering on the back of it, so... It's a fairly charming set, but to me this one definitely is maybe one of the least interesting ones visually just because it feels very flat, there isn't a lot of dynamicism to the layout in terms of 3D layers to it, it just feels like a pretty standard scene. The minifigures are of course very well done, this one even introduces a brand new tail element so that is really special to get a minifigure with not one but two new elements included in the minifig itself, but overall this is just one of those sets where I feel like 30 bucks was a little bit too high for it. Moving onwards from that though, we can take a look at two of the building sets, and I have to say that these two sets were the ones that absolutely interested me the most when I was looking into the Animal Crossing theme. It was the building sets, because obviously Animal Crossing is kind of known for the buildings and the structures that you create and the houses that you build, and so I was really looking forward to actually being able to put together houses in this particular unique style. Now, this is Isabel's House Visit, comes with two minifigures, 389 parts for $40, and this is actually pretty okay value. I'm actually pretty happy with the amount of stuff that we get in the set. What's really cool for Animal Crossing is that much like Fabuland back in the day, they've introduced a brand new door and window system that is currently exclusive to this theme. This is a brand new door, and in fact, 
It's a brand new door piece. This entire door frame is new for Animal Crossing. So this is a brand new piece. This is a brand new door. The windows are all new. So these are brand new pieces used for the windows themselves. Unfortunately, you can't open the shutters, but they're just kind of meant to be window pieces you put in place because the set actually does come with two extra window elements so if you want to switch out the look and feel of the set and literally customize it yourself it's super easy to just put in different styles of windows and that's something i really do appreciate because again the entire game is all about building your own islands and customizing them and the lego sets follow suit this is just a very minor change but it does definitely redefine the look and feel of this particular building by changing out the square to rounded coloration of the windows as well as of course the color itself from the shaping and i just think it's really nice personally i prefer using the dark orange ones because i feel like they fit the look and feel of the house a little better but it's really cool how they include these extra pieces just so you can swap them out and really get creative with the way that you want to play with a set like this now Again, everything is oriented with different modules, so you have like a separate module here that's literally just one separate piece. You have a garden in the front of the house, and here you have a bit of a crafting bench or a workbench here with a slingshot that's a really nice piece to get here, as well as a new printed piece with an acorn on it, which is quite nice. You even have a tree that you're starting to grow here, so you're kind of planting a tree, so that's kind of a nice detail to include, as well as a gift that's descending from a balloon up above. The roofing technique is actually one that I really appreciate in these particular particular sets, they're using the relatively new kind of half hemisphere piece for the roof tiles and I like that we get them in new colors as well as varied colors in these Animal Crossing sets. It's a very simple technique and a simple build where you can see that this just kind of goes around and is open on the backside, but it's a technique and style that works very well for Animal Crossing. Now, one of the core competencies of all of these sets is that they all include these individual furniture items, and they make it very easy for you to move around the furniture pieces should you see fit. If you want to put the bed somewhere else or rotate its positioning, you can absolutely do that, and every single one of these is actually made individually, and the instructions don't even tell you the correct way, the quote-unquote correct way to arrange things. The instructions encourage you to just figure out a way to place these in the house that makes sense to you, and that's a core part of the play for Animal Crossing itself, and I really like how they were able to factor that into this particular set as well, and all of the building focus sets actually have these pieces of furniture, like you've got a coffee table here, some seats, a sink, a kitchen, that you can just use to recreate your own house interior, and maybe even recreate something you've made in-game, which is really nice, and definitely one of the things that I feel like LEGO paid a lot of special attention to when creating these sets, actually adding in these gameplay elements that are the reason as to why people really love the games. It's that customizing factor that allows you to create your own houses. For $40, you get two exclusive minifigures, and yeah, I would have liked three, especially for a $40 set, but again, these minifigures are a lot more expensive to produce than regular LEGO minifigures, and I totally understand that. You're getting new molds for them, dual molding, sometimes even triple molding, so I understand that they had to cut down on some of the characters, but it is a bit of a shame because it does leave some of the sets feeling a little bit empty. Like, for a building this big, would have been great to get at least three figures in it. Moving onwards though, we can take a look at the largest set of the wave, and this one really kind of shows the full potential for what the Animal Crossing theme could be, and that is kind of making this modular Fabuland style village where you can put together all of these different houses and start to make your own layout with them, which is very promising, and I'd love to see it expand because I'm a sucker for when sets are modular and compatible with each other, and this is the perfect example. Unfortunately though, price-wise, I feel like this is one of the sets that hurts the most. $75 or 75 euros with only 535 pieces is quite a lot to ask for a set like this. And just by going off a of volume of stuff, because again, price per part is not everything, but just by going off of the volume of stuff ratio here, this doesn't feel like more than $55 or $60 tops worth of stuff. I don't even know if an extra minifigure would have sold me on it, but the thing is, this set only comes with two minifigures. So for the largest set of the wave, the maximum amount of figures you get in any one set is two is a little disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. I really was hoping to get more characters included in these sets. And yes, again, I get it. These are really expensive figures to produce, but especially if you're charging a premium for the set, like $75 for the set, 
I would have at least expected three minifigures to really make the scene feel more fleshed out. They have the bare minimum number of figures you need. You have the store owner here, and you have the person who lives in the house here. That's really basically the bare minimum of having two buildings, and just would have been so cool to get a little more variety in the characters, especially just maybe thrown in a couple more here and there. That being said, price and figures aside, this is a really nice set. And I think that this is easily my favorite set build-wise out of the entire wave. I really like it for what it is. Just, again, you gotta ignore the price and the figures and take it for the set itself. Now, on the interior of the house, again, you have the possibility to swap out the different window pieces, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But you've also got this whole furniture rearrangement and swapping type of play set up here, so you can move the bed around inside the house itself. There is an exclusive printed 2x2 element with the bubblegum print on it, which is really nice, and you have all sorts of different components to the house itself. A little pink couch, you have this very nice transparent glitter opalescent pink piece right here. You've got a flower in a pot, and it's just a very charming vibe. Inside the store here, you've got all sorts of different things on sale, like a radio, a plant, a guitar, a bucket, and even inside here you have a number of unique printed elements, two of which are exclusive to this set, where inside the fridge you can see you've got the fish print, a flower print, both of which are exclusive to Animal Crossing, as well as one of those 1x2 acorn tiles, which did appear in one of the other sets as well. And you can see you're spending your coins at the register, which is again utilizing that coin element right there that's been introduced for the theme. And overall, this feels like a pretty nice, almost kind of return to classic LEGO. This feels to me like if you were to get LEGO Fabuland today, or to get LEGO classic kind of houses and buildings, this is what we would get, and that's definitely not a bad thing, especially in an age where sets are getting more and more complicated and complex. It's really nice to have something that almost feels like a vintage set modernized or come to life in the form of these Animal Crossing sets here. I'm struggling to put my finger on why I really gravitate towards these sets so much more than the Super Mario sets, which... I do always get all of the Super Mario sets, like I'll always get all of them and I have all the course builders, but honestly, the whole course building system for LEGO Mario is getting a little bit old to me, and I feel like the reason for that is because even when you have the larger sets that have buildings and structures, they don't really feel that there's that much going on with them. They feel like there's a lot of open and empty space because they have to accommodate these super-sized LEGO Mario scanning systems and allow you to have kids take the big Mario figure and slam it on the base plates. Here, you're using basically the same system, right? Like, you're using the same plates, the same exact building system, heck, even the same way that they attach, which is another complaint that I have about the Mario sets, is that you can't really move them around because they immediately fall apart if you try to move them. But this is so much better because they're not trying to make these a course builder system. Instead, they're just trying to make these a system of play where you can move things around in different environments and actually build up a full-on village, which is a lot more interesting to me than having a course builder system full of just flat terrain and a ton of enemies to take down. Obviously, they're geared towards different things, but I find it interesting how the two video game-associated LEGO themes have a very, very similar style and aesthetic. It was like these pieces and this system was almost made for creating expansions to games like this, and I'm really curious to see what LEGO will plan to do with this theme in the future, if they'll plan to give us even larger sets, and I'm curious to see how the sets will sell. At least when I went in on March 1st to buy these bright and early at the LEGO store, they sold out very quickly. Like, this store ran out of this set in particular very fast, so clearly the price is not a deterrent for people who do really want to pick up LEGO Animal Crossing and have the sets on their own, but... It's just something I do want to point out as a very interesting aspect to Animal Crossing itself, and the fact that even though these sets may not be for everyone, there is a massive, massive market for them. They are very popular. Animal Crossing is a game that, well, it maybe did admittedly peak during COVID, and it got maybe the most players during that time. It is still something that is very strong in the public consciousness, and... Everybody wants LEGO Animal Crossing. I remember there was a huge, huge demand. I think there was even an ideas project that did really well and got the amount of supporters it needed back in the day to be able to get this made. And 
There's a good reason for it, these are charming, they're fun, and I just love how you can combine the sets together and make them fully modular in all sorts of configurabilities. And now for the final thing, I want to set aside every single one of the minifigures included in the sets themselves and take a look at them individually, see what I think about each and every one of the figures, and talk about the design philosophies behind all of them. So, let's take a look at the figures right now. Okay, so here are the characters of LEGO Animal Crossing, and honestly, there's a lot of variety here. Despite the fact that, again, as I said, across all five sets, the most number of figures that appear in one set is two, they were able to provide us with a ton of specialized animal molds and all sorts of adorable characters, sporting brand new torso prints, accessories, mid-legs in different colors, and all sorts of just really interesting character designs that really mimic and copy the style of the game to perfect extent. Now, I gotta give my favorite one here, it is the one that resembles a duck the closest, so I gotta be biased, but I think that all of them are really cute, and if I wasn't biased, I probably would really like this one. But altogether, this is a really impressive minifigure lineup, because the production quality on these figures is one of the best that we've seen from LEGO in years. I mean, just look at the dual molding on the headpiece here. You've got the flame yellowish orange or keto orange alongside the dark brown color here, and then you have the printed ears and printing on the eyes and eyeballs and pupils. It's just so, so good. And I just love how ubiquitous the torso elements are as well. You can very realistically use these torsos for regular LEGO minifigures, like a minifigure with a tree sweater, and it works totally well. Even the ones that are a little bit more simplistic, like this one that just has a very rounded style, does still feel like it does fit within the LEGO realm, while still being very clearly Animal Crossing inspired, and I just really like the amount of attention to detail that was given to every single one of the minifigures here. If we can get our camera to focus up here, there we go. This is the bunny, so you've got another dual molding for the head, as well as really great ear detailing. It's just so, so good. These minifigures kind of blew me away when I first saw them, and obviously this one is one of the most iconic kind of characters in Animal Crossing. You have the printed sack here with the star on it, and dual molded arms, which is really great. And even for some of the characters, they are utilizing the tail element, so this one has that rocket raccoon tail. You've got Another one with this aforementioned new piece right there, which just looks really good. And overall, very, very impressed with the characters. They did not need to go so hard on the minifigures themselves, or maybe they did need to, because I don't know how you'd depict these with normal minifigures, but they all look so good. They're all very specialized to kind of have their own unique aesthetic to them and their own thing going on for every single one of the characters. And I'm very excited to see what LEGO will do in the future, because if they're putting this much attention to detail, money, and effort into crafting the designs of these characters, they clearly are expecting Animal Crossing to perform really, really well, and I hope it does, because it is a really cute licensed theme. It kind of feels like a return to the classic era of LEGO, where things were just a little bit simpler. It feels almost like Vintage Town, or again, as I keep saying in this video, Fabuland Remade. So, I'm a big fan of the figures, and I feel like they fit the vibe perfectly. That's pretty much all I have to say for this review. I definitely will be making a minifigure wall display of all of the figures once uh, more sets come out, and maybe I'll start off with just the ones that are already out because I feel like they already will make a pretty cute wall display to put all of the minifigures together. But overall, really impressed with the character designs here, and I'm very curious to see if LEGO will continue to do more stuff like this, and one can only hope that the upcoming LEGO Fortnite minifigures are just as good because this sets a very high bar for future video game integrated characters. And if LEGO ever decides to do Mario minifigures, I genuinely don't know why they haven't done it yet. Well, this absolutely sets a big precedent for those figures to look really good. That's all for this review, and I hope you enjoyed watching this look at the new Animal Crossing LEGO sets. Alright, and with that we have summed up our review of every single LEGO Animal Crossing set that just released on March 1st, 2024. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of these sets, do you like them, do you dislike them, do you own any of these sets? Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoy and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Bye for now.